Here is our power ranking of the top seven waterbenders in the Avatar world. Five. You want to learn to fight so bad? Study closely. Number seven, Kaya. As the daughter of Katara, it's no wonder that Kaya is a powerful waterbender. Trained by her mother, Kaya adapted the tactic of carrying her own water supply, giving her access to her craft even when not near an obvious water source. She's proven to be creative and resourceful in battle against powerful opponents, and also excels in another skill passed down by her mother, healing. I told you those rocks were slippery. You're lucky you didn't kill yourself. You done with the lecture, Mom? Making Kaya not only a valuable offensive ally, but also an essential defensive and supportive member of the group. Number six, Ming Hua. Living through her life without arms, Ming had no choice but to adapt. And as we know from Toph Beifong, the need to adapt can bring about unique and innovative forms of bending. So it's no surprise that Ming is one of the most uniquely powerful benders in the world. Using the motion of her body, she's able to water bend tendrils of water to use in place of arms. This gives her the functionality of arms, but with far more versatility. For example, she can extend her arms to swing around her environment, grab opponents at a distance, and even create numerous extra tendrils, maintaining individual control over each one. She can even use her watery tendrils to perform conventional waterbending techniques at the same time. Number five, Hama. Sorry to frighten you. My name is Hama. While Hama was definitely a powerful bender as a young girl in the Southern Water Tribe, it's what she was able to accomplish by her old age that truly set her apart from other benders. Thanks to the extreme conditions of her imprisonment by the Fire Nation, Hama learned a skill out of desperation, a skill that revolutionized what we know about the limits of water bending. Blood bending, controlling the water in another body, enforcing your own will over there. That's right. At the full moon, Hama had the ability to bend the water in an opponent's body and exercise full control over them. It's a technique she was able to use to great effect while escaping from the Fire Nation and exacting a misguided revenge on its civilians. This in addition to her mind for locating less obvious sources of water. You've got to keep an open mind, Katara. There's water in places you never think about. Makes her one scary opponent. Number four, Tarlock. As a representative and chairman of the United Republic Council, Tarlock already had vast political power. Tarlock, I don't know what you did to get Chief Sycon in your pocket, but I highly doubt it was legal. Oh, Tenzin, always the conspiracy theorist. His charisma, coupled with his secret manipulative nature, greatly amplified that power. So sad to see your little team avatar broken up. You had a good run. But additionally, Tarlock was a formidable waterbender, thanks to the teaching of his notorious criminal father, Yakon. Tarlock! You better shape up or you'll be out here in the cold all night until you get it right. Who not only instilled traditional waterbending techniques in him, but also passed down his knowledge of bloodbending, even teaching him to use the technique without a full moon. Since such a technique was so rare that most people didn't even know it was possible, Tarlock excelled at using the element of surprise to his advantage, using bloodbending as a last resort to take the upper hand. You're in my way, Avatar, and you need to be removed. You're... you're a bloodbender? Very observant. Number three, Amon. Speaking of the element of surprise, Amon had mastered it, and it's no wonder because he was secretly Tarlock's older brother, Noatok. I guess it runs in the family. Amon had convinced the citizens of Republic City that he was a non-bender, but in reality, he was a master waterbender. And just like his brother, he had been trained by Yakon at a young age. But his bloodbending was arguably better than Tarlock's. That's the way it's done. That's what you need to strive for. Allowing him to even use bloodbending to block chakras in an opponent's body, taking away their bending permanently.
you do to me? Your firebending is gone. Forever. Since he had convinced Republic City that he was a non-bender, he was able to pass off his bloodbending as an energy bending power granted to him by the spirits, making him not only a capable waterbender, but a powerful and dangerous leader as well. Number 2. Katara When her journey first began, Katara was a waterbending novice, only just discovering her abilities. But her drive and determination to become a waterbending master greatly advanced her skills. She did whatever it took to find ways to hone those skills. I used to kind of look up to pirates, but those guys are terrible. I know. That's why I took this. No wonder they were trying to hack us up. You stole their waterbending scroll. She stood up to Master Paku when he refused to teach her because she was a girl. You can't knock me down. And she even used her waterbending to save the Avatar's life. Her bending was not only powerful, but versatile as well. She frequently used clever tricks like state changing to her advantage. She was a natural using all sorts of healing powers and proved to be proficient at bloodbending. So proficient, in fact, that on her first bloodbending attempt ever, she was able to best Hama, a woman who had spent decades practicing the art. Congratulations, Katara. You're a bloodbender. In the end, it's her determination, cleverness, and versatility that sets her far above other waterbenders. Number 1. Yue Okay, so this is a little unorthodox, since when we first met Yue, she wasn't even a waterbender. But hear us out. As a baby, Yue was touched by the moon spirit and given life, and always carried a piece of the moon spirit inside her. So in return, when Admiral Zhao destroyed the moon spirit, it was Yue's choice to give up her mortal form to take on the role herself. You have been touched by the moon spirit. Some of its life is in you. Yes, you're right. It gave me life. Maybe I can give it back. As the moon spirit, Yue is able to bend the very tides themselves. Not only is she the inspiration for the techniques of all waterbenders, but she's also the very source of their power. I've always noticed my water bending is stronger at night. Our strength comes from the spirit of the moon. That's right. She's the spirit that makes all water bending possible. So it's kind of like any bending done by a water bender is really Yue water bending. Are we cheating a little? Maybe. But if Yue hadn't made her sacrifice, there would be no water bending at all. So we think she deserves a little credit. And the position of the number one waterbender in the Avatar world.